Smith's out there. Got him stride. He'll score. What I tell you? Ten, five, and a touchdown. Carolina Panthers. He's just another notch on the best post. That's 800. And if I see him in the street, I'm going to bust him in his mouth. Fires deep. He's got Deep Smith Senior open. Caught 30 yard line. Bengal 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Ravens. Welcome to Baltimore. Steve Smith Senior. If you think I can't play, you're going to find out we fought. Our next guest is calling it quits after 16 NFL seasons. Not many people can say that, but after over 1,000 receptions, 81 touchdowns, and nearly 15,000 receiving yards, there's a good chance his next stop will be at the Hall of Fame in Canton. We welcome Steve Smith to the desk. Let me just say congratulations Thank on you. an incredible career. Appreciate well, it. Well, first of all, we, good do morning. Un we, we do understand that the Hall of Fame is not just because of his play on the field. Uh -huh. He has the greatest name in sports. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Give it love. Give it love right there. Give it love right there. Technically, it's Steve Also, mm. also had, the whole, <laughs> had the whole league shook it. His size, like, no, no one that's wanted right, a piece of him right, somehow. That's right. That's right. That's right. the Giants in the playoffs, by the way. But honestly, we've enjoyed watching you so much Thank for you. years. Congrats. I appreciate it. So you know these Patriots very well. Which team is the biggest threat to New England in the AFC? I think the biggest threat can be potentially the Kansas City Chiefs. Hmm. I think overall they're a more rounded, more well-rounded team. I think defensively they create a lot of issues, but then offensively they are very explosive, but they also can be become methodical down the field. And I think with when you're playing the New England Patriots, you have to be patient. They do a very good job of making teams impatient. Um, a la the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> when we become, when you become slash we become very impatient, you start to do things that are uncharacteristic. And when you do that, you make mistakes. And then all of a sudden you find yourself down 14 points in the beginning of the second quarter very quickly. Um, I remember that game where we didn't even have a ball. You know, they had the ball for 10 minutes straight. So they do a very good job of dinking and dunk. You know, Tom Brady's doing a great job you know, without Gronk, without some of the big name guys he's had in the past, but that makes his legacy even bigger because no matter who you put out there, he makes those guys better. He's very, he's very methodical. He could carve you up, just like you said about Aaron Rodgers, but I think he's a step above Aaron Rodgers. Uh, several steps. Mm. No one's above Aaron Rodgers, Steve Smith. I know you've forgotten more several football than I'll ever know, but you're wrong about that one. Look, um, you talk about the Kansas City Chiefs, you're absolutely right. That's the smart money pick, right? Like, that, that, that's the most well-rounded kind of threat to the Patriots. And I've been all season saying, I know everyone wants it to be the Steelers. I grew up a Steelers fan even before I was a Giants fan. The, the, Giants the thing were is, sorry I wasn't Steelers, paying attention to you during the season, so I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, listen, that, right, you were playing. Yeah. But the fact is, I looked at the Steelers all season. I know people wanted it to be this historically great offense, but they were missing certain pieces. The defense was terrible. The secondary was no good. You know what's happened over the last seven games? The Steelers have rounded into an elite defense. I mean, I see they can get after the quarterback. And now you have a team that is the real X factor, I think, in the AFC. Because, oh, you got Brady. Okay, he's the best. How's Big Ben? Not too shabby. You got a receiver and a running back who are as good as you ever want to see. Like, you've never seen Correct. something really that much better than those guys. And now you got a defense that's getting after the quarterback. I know the Kansas City Chiefs are the smart money pick all season long, but the way they're playing right now, boy, I would not want to see the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I agree with you there. The Steelers would definitely be a bigger threat to me because they're not as pedestrian offensively <laughs> as the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's really what it comes down to. If Jamal Charles, had he been in there, that would be different. Not to knock Spencer Ware, because I know Spencer Ware can play, and I got yep. major props from him. But Jeremy Macklin has some health issues. Kelsey can play. We all get this. But I just look at the Kansas City Chiefs, and I say to myself, it all comes back down to Alex Smith. And that's the reason why I use pedestrian. He won't kill you, okay? But that's the problem. He won't kill you. You see what I'm saying? He won't kill himself, but he won't kill you either. Because but that's, he, but that's not necessarily all his fault. He, he's only, he is only executing the plays that are called. Well, if they are calling plays sometimes, question. answer. Question. I, I, question. Yes. <laughs> the reason why I feel differently about that, educate me on this. I would feel that way if he were that way in a particular system. He's been that way since he's been in the NFL. That's my issue, no matter where he's at. So I got to believe that some coach, particularly somebody that I've known for years in Andy Reid, is going to cater him his offense 
and the play calling according to the talent that he has at the quarterback position. There was a guy sitting in this seat prior before me, mm -hmm. Donvig McNabb, yes. who also played in the Andy Reid system yep. and became a dink, a dink and dunk kind of offense. Even though when T.O. became there, when T.O. got there, they started to spread the ball down yeah. the field, but this is the same offense that also allowed Freddie Mitchell to think that he was a real superstar and a, a number and, one and, wide and, receiver. And you had James so, Crash and Tom correct. Pinkston, exactly. but you had Brian Westbrook coming out of the backfield. Yes, but it was all within the hashes. It was nothing really going down the field. Every so often they would, but until they got T.O., they really didn't go down the field a lot. That's right. And so you take that now in Kansas City, and Alex, Alex Smith is a Utah guy, so I'm, I'm yay Utah. But he is a guy that's only executing the offense in which they have. They've always been in between okay. the hash kind of okay. offense. So what are you saying, Steve Smith? I love saying that name for somebody else, by the way. But what are you saying, Steve Smith? Are you telling me that we're going to wake up over the next couple of weeks and all of a sudden we're going to see an adventurous Alex Smith? That well, we're if, see you wanna win, see that. if you want to win, if you want to win, I got a question. That's not going to happen. I, you I, I you can't play not to lose kind of offense. Hey, that's all he's done. But here's the difference, Steve, Steve Smith, I have a question Hold on, I'm still talking. The, all, the defense gives I like this guy. the Kansas City Chiefs more opportunity offensively. When your defense isn't stopping anybody, your offense cannot make mistakes. They can't throw away the ball. You're not going to always win a game 27 to 30. You can't. If a team scores 27 points against you nine times out of ten, you're not going to you know win the game. You know how Kansas City feels about being in Foxborough. You do know that. I, I've never been in Kansas City, question. so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Tell Go me ahead. when you're ready for the question. We're good. Okay, We're good. good. Ready? Good. Yes. <laughs> I want to mess with Steve Smith. Boy, I've seen him 300-pounders not want to mess with him. Now, you ain't been messing Stephen with Steve A. Smith Smith's you point here, Stephen A. Smith's point really is, let, let's talk about the big picture with Alex Smith. Yes, I understand the plays, he has to execute the plays that are called. Yes. There may be something to the fact they look at his arm and go, well, we got to call certain plays. But there also may be something to his personality, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, yes, he's mistake free, but does he have that extra something that will allow him to execute the game winning play? Is there something to the fact that maybe that's missing from him? All these quarterbacks in here have had, at some point in their career, had a time where they have to adapt and understand, and offense coordinators and head coaches have to minimize the mistakes. And in these big games, they have to minimize the mistakes. They cannot go in there and all of a sudden and throw the kitchen sink. One of the things that you can always do, a guarantee a loss, if you try to be something you're not, you have to go with what you know and be ready to so win what the is game. He's, well, not. Just, he's you, not a big you, play you, dude. You, you just basically said Kansas City essentially has no shot because going I didn't to, say, no, 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 That's not no, what no, I no, said. I didn't quote you. Okay. I'm saying basically, <laughs> meaning paraphrasing. The bottom line is this, Steve Smith. Yes. If Kansas City is who we know they are and who they have been, they've got no shot against New England. Can you use the inside voice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. I, you you know came how loaded. You came loaded. Here's another subject. Actually, the answer would be no. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what I do. Listen, That's like me listen, going on the football field. I got two rowdy scenes right good. now. Can we I'm, move on, gentlemen? I'm, just, I'm yeah. chill. He's you're yelling. Chill. Yeah. And, uh, I like man. it. You're holding your own. You're, I, you're, I, you're I, holding court uh, right now. I want to get into another subject you're okay. very qualified to talk about right now. Okay. That would be the wide receiver position. So the Giants Never heard of them. <laughs> had a 425 p.m. Eastern kick Sunday where they beat the Redskins at FedEx Field. Then the entire receiving core hopped a plane to Miami. Odell Beckham Jr., Victor Cruz, Sterling Shepard, Roger Lewis partying at Live Nightclub in South Beach, chilling in VIP with Trey songs in the Beebs Monday morning the party continued they were all hanging out on a boat according to Trey Song Snapchat so this just in the Giants have a huge playoff matchup at Lambeau but Giants head coach Ben McAdoo had zero issue with it saying Monday the players were off until Tuesday mm -hmm. and he will see them at practice as they get ready for the Packers Steve should they get a pass for this uh they were off mm -hmm. oh, let me say this yeah. we have in Baltimore we have Mondays off okay. so I hop on a plane I go back to Charlotte a lot of times unless I get arrested or I do something that causes me to be in trouble, what I do on my day off is none of your business. If Meaning for your opinion. Okay. They won the game. They had the day off. They didn't skip meetings. They didn't do anything. They decided to go to Miami. I have one question. Would you be going to Charlotte before a playoff game and staying up all night? Do, when is the game? Uh, Saturday. When is it? Saturday, Sunday, Saturday. Saturday. This coming up? Yeah. Yes. And they Sunday, were, I, Sunday. Was it like Monday yesterday? What is today? Today's Tuesday. Today's okay. Tuesday. See, that's retired life. I only had one. <laughs> <Yeah. percent. laughs> so this will be Sunday, staying up all night, staying Monday. You'd okay. still be in Charlotte, and then you have that game to prepare for at Lambeau, and they beat you there. Okay. You're cool with it? I've, I've flown home to Charlotte and been in practice Monday morning. So Here's how, you, the how, you handle your, how you handle your day off 
it's how you handle it. Now, if they lose, everybody's going to say something. But that's, that, that is social media today. One, can't tell your business. The problem is they put themselves out there, and so now everybody's there to judge. I don't have a problem with it. But that's, that's, that's the reality. Like, what you're saying is right. These are adults. Yeah. They do what they Was want. Was it Eli in Mexico? That, that, these with are, a shirt off? But, when, but, if, <laughs> but if, you are seen, if you are seen on social media or wherever partying, then there's two things you got to do if you're Odell. I'm not talking about what should be. I'm talking about the reality of what is. He's got a ball. Or he will be criticized. I mean, if you don't, if you can handle the criticism, fine. But he's got a ball. That's one. Yes. Because Odell is the face of the franchise more than anyone. Odell Correct. is the best player on the team, even though Victor Cruz won the Super Bowl already, and and Eli's obviously the quarterback. I think the, the New York but, Giants won the Super Bowl. So, not yeah, but I'm Cruz. saying Victor Cruz is a Super Bowl champion, and he was the, he was one of the receivers there. Yes. And he's the veteran. But it is Odell who is the face. It is Odell who's the best player. So one, he's got a ball, and two, there are going to be other disgruntled teammates. Oh, what is he doing that for? He should be here. Da da da. Those guys, Odell has every right to look at them and go, I'm twice as good as them. Why don't you worry about balling yourself? I'll be fine. He probably will ball. He might be right about that, but he has to understand sure that, that if he loses, if the team loses, he will get some blame for it now because of this. Of course. He, he's got a ball and they've got to win if he doesn't want to hear it because he will. That's the reality. He will hear it otherwise. Putting too much, you're putting way too much effort and credit. And, 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 let me tell you something. You are naive to believe that those wide receivers are the only ones celebrating at the end of the year going to the playoffs. He and his counterparts were just shown. I know for a fact we lost, and I took a little time to drink some water, and we lost. You're going to celebrate. The, the season is too long to just sit around and go, okay, let's go watch film. Can't Two be days out off. Got to Got to be I careful. agree. He can't be Stephen put a. out there. Let me use my inside voice. There we go. For this issue, and I'm dead serious about it, they did nothing wrong in terms of they ain't get arrested, they ain't mm -hmm. get in any trouble, what they do on their day off, et cetera, et cetera. But if I were the GM or if I were the owner, I would have a problem with it. Number one, because of the element that you looked to be around. Mm. Number two, because perception is reality and the kind of attention that element may bring to the equation. Number three, because you ain't established yet. I don't want to hear nothing about Steve Smith. Steve Smith going to the Hall of Fame. Steve Smith has been in this league for many, many years. You're tried, true, and tested. Don't want to hear nothing about Eli. Eli's a champion. Don't want to hear anything about Michael Jordan. He a champion. I don't want to hear anything about these people. When I'm looking at you, and I love me some Odell Beckham Jr., brothers big time, but when you consider all the attention that you've had for various reasons in your young NFL career, yeah. the fact that you have no sensitivity at that particular moment disturbs me. Here's another thing, and this is the point that we brought up here. Yeah, the season is long. I never played football. I'm not qualified to dispute that. But I do know that dudes who are big time have bigger dreams. And dreams are of wow. championships. And those championships that we're talking about here, yeah. that time that you spent partying and live, I could have been doing something else to have myself even better prepared, whether it's watching additional films. Result-oriented. If you I, I, win, everyone can I, shut up. I, I understand that. I'm just saying, I'm talking about beforehand, because the wins ain't guaranteed. You don't know. So what, what, what separates the great ones from those who are just very talented? It's that little extra something that they put forth mm -hmm. that says whatever it takes for me to get that edge. I hate agreeing with him right because now. Because that's the mm -hmm. deal. And that's where but that's I got where, a problem but that's with where it. legends are made, right? And I know it's not basketball. I know it's not Jordan gambling and then dropping fifty in, in, in Madison Square Garden, you know, coming in three in the morning on a helicopter. I get that. He was a champion. You don't already. have that much influence over the game like in basketball. But even if it's correlation and not causation, the bottom line is if they win and Odell balls after this, that adds to a legend. The, the fact that you put in the word if is where the problem lies. Let me finish because Wait. it hasn't happened yet. I'm simply saying when you don't know what's ahead, mm. then you have Preach. to prepare yourself. And what's ahead Come will on. color then, how we see this. Then you have, no, forget how we see it. You, as the individual, has to prepare yourself at an ultra level so the ifs are minimized. Am I wrong? New millennium. No question. Steve Smith, appreciate you. Again, congratulations on incredible you. career. Hopefully you will be back with us. Yes.